Geometry nodes can be a bit daunting at first, but you can achieve some pretty incredible results with very few nodes. Hey guys, I'm Kenny Phases with CG Cookie here, and over the past month, I've been building and experimenting a lot with geometry node setups. So in this video, I wanna share eight techniques that you can use today to create professional, production-ready results without overcomplicating your node graphs. I will first lay out the exact node recipe and then go through each setup individually. These are bite-sized ideas that you can remix into your own projects, so let's go ahead and jump right in. For this first effect, we'll be exploring procedural displacement using geometry nodes. First, we'll generate a grid with a high resolution. We can then change this grid using the set position node. The key here is to use a texture node to drive the position of the mesh itself. We can then target the z-axis with a combined xyz node. Lastly, we'll give it some motion by driving the w factor of our noise texture with the scene time node. This will change the texture per frame. And then we can just fine tune this with a math node for our speed control. You can experiment with different textures for a variety of results. This setup also works on regular mesh objects, but it requires a slightly different setup as you can see here. Some ideal use cases for this technique could include water surfaces, sci-fi panels, animated terrain, or any surface that needs subtle motion or deformation over time. Next, we'll explore a neat effect using geometry proximity. Again, we'll start off in a similar manner using a grid node, but this time with a lower resolution. We'll convert that into points and run it through an instance on points node. For our instance object, I'll just use a cube scaled down quite a bit. Next, we'll need a separate object outside of our geometry node setup to be used as the proximity reference. We'll plug this object's geometry data into our geometry proximity node. Using the distance output, we can precisely calculate its distance from our instances. If we plug this into the scale, we can affect the scale of each instance within the proximity to our reference object. Now we can fine tune this using the map range node and experiment with the values. This map range node will determine the spacing and intensity of the proximity fall off. Lastly, we'll only target the z-axis for the specific look you can see on screen. To animate our reference object, I will add a curved circle and I'll give my reference object the follow path constraint, directly targeting the curve. Once you click animate path, you can watch as your reference object follows the path. The final result is quite impressive considering how few nodes it really requires. This next setup creates a fully procedural animated wireframe using geometry nodes, giving you far more control than the standard wireframe modifier. Once you have your desired object, we'll start by converting the mesh to a curve. Next, we will convert the curve back to a mesh using the curve circle as a profile shape. This will allow us to actually see our curves. Next, we will use a switch node and a geometry node to run our original geometry through, allowing us to turn this layer on and off as we please. Finally, to animate our wireframe, we will need the trim curve node, which allows us to adjust the total length of the curve from start to finish. We will utilize the scene time node to drive this parameter. With the help of a math node, we can also fine tune the speed. And now our finished result looks polished and smooth. Some ideal use cases for this technique could include technical visuals, motion design elements, animated topology reveals, or stylized renders where line thickness and visibility need to be art directed. One of the most complex examples we will go over is this animated fur setup. This is a lightweight, fully procedural hair system built entirely with curves, not the traditional hair system. You can use any object for this example, and you can see I've laid out the nodes for your convenience. Using your desired object, in my case, this sphere, we will distribute points on faces first. The density value can crash Blender, so use this value wisely. These points are where the first system will stem from. Next, we will instance curved lines onto those points. We'll fine tune this node later on. After this, we will need to align our curves to the normal by utilizing the Align Rotation to Vector node. Use this node as a bridge between distribution normal output and the instance rotation input. Now that our curves are aligned correctly, we will randomly scale them with a random value node and a scale instances node. Now before we add our noise variation, we'll need to realize our instances. Now we can set up our curve type. Resample your curve first, set the spline type to Bezier, set the handle type to Auto. At this point, we need a way to visualize our curve. 
So we'll convert them to a mesh using a curved circle as usual, with a small resolution to speed up compute time. And now we're ready to use the set position node, similar to before, using a noise texture to drive the offset. Now, since we're using a normal object and not a grid, we'll need to duplicate this set position node, flipping the scale with a vector scale node. Now, just like before, we can animate the noise texture's W value with a scene time node and math node for fine adjustments. Finally, we can drive the scale of the profile using the spline parameter node and color ramp node. This will give our curves some taper to their radius. At the end, we can rejoin our curve and our main object together to create our finalized effect. Now, simply fine tune your numbers to get the desired result. Some ideal use cases for this technique could include stylized fur, grass, fibers, or strand-based effects that need to stay procedural and easy to animate. Here I'm using an image to directly drive real 3D geometry through displacement in geometry nodes. This one's pretty simple, but it's super effective. We'll only need about five nodes for this. Once you have your desired logo picked out, it's simply plug and play from here. Start with the grid node plugged into a set position node. Now we will add our image using the image texture node. Before we plug into our offset, we'll want to specifically target the Z axis with a combined XYZ node. We can add our vector scale node for fine tuning. To correct our scaling, we can plug in the UV map output from the grid into the image texture. And it's really that easy. This technique works on any image and can even work with textures if the resolution is high enough on your grid. The higher your resolution is, the better your quality will be. For an even smoother result, add the smooth modifier to clean up those edges. If you want to take this effect one step further, you can open up your shader editor, creating a new material called Logo. Now, head back over to the Geometry Nodes tab and give it a new material. Now, in the shader editor, simply add your image texture, linking the color slots together and driving your vector with a texture coordinate node. Now, your texture and image will work in unison to create an awesome effect. Some ideal use cases for this technique could include logos, embossing, signage, relief patterns, or adding branded detail to a product or motion design work. This next technique converts geometry into clean, blueprint-style line work that's great for non, photo reel, or technical renders. This setup will allow us to create as many blueprint style views of an object that we want, all with a super simple node setup. The first thing we need to do is add an object to our scene. In this case, I will use the monkey. Now, we will convert the monkey to a curve. To visualize our curve, we'll convert it back into a mesh using the curve circle for the profile. Scale this as desired. I tend to use a lower resolution to speed up compute time. Now, the real trick here is to utilize the Transform Geometry node. We'll be using this node for each axis. We will essentially flatten the curve with a very small value on each scale axis. Next, we can reposition each flattened curve using the translation values. Once we're happy, we can repeat this process again, joining the newly flattened curves with the Join Geometry node. You will have to play with the scale and the rotation to achieve the desired angles. I prefer the three angle setup for X, Y, and Z. You can see that even if we edit our object, each blueprint will still adjust in real time. Some ideal use cases for this technique could include product visualization, architectural diagrams, educational graphics, or schematic animations where clarity matters more than realism. This next setup creates a condensation look on any surface. Starting off, we'll need to distribute points on the faces of our object. We can control the density of those points later. Plug this into an instance on points node. For our droplets, we'll want to use a sphere, but we don't need the whole sphere, so we'll use a little bit of geometry node magic to cut it in half. We can actually delete any points below the z-axis value of zero. Now, we can see that we only have half of our sphere, but we still need to align it to the surface. So we'll go ahead and use the align rotation to vector node, similar to before, routing the normal value through the vector and into the rotation for our instances. Now, to make everything seem more organic and random, we can use a random value node to randomly scale each instance. At this point, we can simply rejoin our original geometry and shade smooth to finalize the result. If you want to apply a material, you can simply add a glass shader to your droplets with an IOR of 1.33. And with some simple lighting and materials, you can see that we have a pretty awesome result. You can play with the density and scale to achieve different results here. Some ideal use cases for this technique could include rain effects, condensation, 
organic growth, or adding surface detail without sculpting or manual placement. For this next abstract effect, instead of working only on the surface, this technique fills the entire volume of an object with procedural curves. This one is also quite simple to set up, and you can easily achieve a variety of different results if you just play with the settings. First, take your selected object and convert it to a volume. Next, we'll distribute points within that volume. So far we only have points, so we need to connect them into one continuous curve using the points to curves node. After setting the spline and handle types, we can simply convert it back into a visible mesh using the curve circle profile. Now we can apply a fun gradient shader to our curve and fine tune our parameters. And just like that, we have an awesome abstract curve sculpture. Some ideal use cases for this technique could include cables, internal structures, abstract designs, or stylized ways to visually define volume inside of an object.